This is a story of ancient Rome in the days when Nero was throwing Christians to the lions. And these court cards are going to represent some of the Christians, Christian children, Christian ladies, Christian men. And these aces will be the four lions. Now we'll shuffle the lions up. Will you shuffle them, please? Keep them face down, shuffle them, and then lay them in a face down row. The purpose of that is to give the lions exercise so they have more of an appetite for the Christians. <laughs> now, will you help me throw the Christians to the lions? Will you pick up any packet of Christians and drop it on one of the lions? It doesn't matter which. Thank you. And would you like to throw some Christians to the lions? I'll throw the children. Right. <laughs> and would you like to throw the last one on either? It doesn't matter which goes which. So let's check where we've got to. Here we got the ace, the lion of diamonds, and one, two, three. These are the four, the four Christian men. We got the lion of clubs, and one, two, three, the four Christian children. The lion of spades with the four Christian ladies. Now this poor lion didn't have a Christian, but the other lions were kindly beasts and they offered to contribute. And the lion <laughs> with the men gave him a man. The lion with the four Christian children gave him a child. The lion with the ladies gave him a lady. The Christians got into conversation with the lion and happened to mention that they didn't want to be eaten, which surprised the lion, who believed it was an honour to be eaten by a lion. <laughs> but as I said, they were kindly beasts, and he was a bit of a magician. So he made a magic pass with his claws. <laughs> and here, once more, were the Christian men. Here, all together, were the Christian children. Here, safe and sound, were the Christian ladies. And here, of course, were the four lions. And they didn't go hungry either, because they ate the do-gooder lion who'd lost some of their supper. <laughs> <laughs> well, all you need for this trick is the ghost count, plus the Eric de la Mer count that I showed you earlier on, where you're force counting four as five, taking one fairly into the fingers, taking the second so that it rests on the fingers, feeding it back as you take the third, then fair, fair, false count four as five. The order of the cards at the beginning should be alternating colors. This prevents the same colour cropping up three times later on when you come to do the ghost count. But whether you have Jack, Queen, King, or Queen, King, Jack, or whatever, the order here doesn't matter. And the order of the aces doesn't matter. So, you're ready to go. And you talk about the Christian children, the Christian ladies, the Christian men. And I like to turn those down at that stage. And... The aces represent the lions. And you ask somebody to shuffle the lions. The real purpose of this is simply to confuse people as to which lion is which, which ace is which, so that you can have more of an excuse later on for checking. You ask them to throw the Christians to the lions. Once more, it doesn't matter how they do it. Let's suppose it's like this. You check. Here I've got the ace, the lion, I usually make a deliberate slip there, ace of clubs, lion of clubs, and one, two, three, four. That's what I'm doing the Eric de la Mer count, which incidentally switches the card that's left. You put it down as though it were the ace. 
Now, you don't show these cars deliberately, but before you put them down, you're going to say, the Lion of Clubs and these are the four Christian men. And you spread them a bit, you take face card in the other hand, and you put it at the back, letting these cards separate a bit so that they see quite a lot of kings, and you flip them down and place them. I like to place them not square, but in front. It's easier for me to keep track of what packet I've dealt with, what I haven't. This is the actual order at that stage, which, as you can see, is in the correct position for doing a ghost count, concealing the ace. Same thing here. We've got the line of hearts and one, two, three. These are the four, the Christian children. Once more, we just place the card. The Lion of Diamonds, and one, two, three. These are the four, the Christian ladies. Now, this poor lion didn't have a Christian, but the other lions were kindly beasts, so they offered to contribute. And you pick up and check yourself to remind yourself, which means that you're holding the cards face towards yourself without the spectators seeing the face card and remembering it too clearly. You're handy for transferring it into the other hand and taking it at fingertip grip ready for the count and start the ghost count as you bring the hand down and they see the king of hearts in motion so they're less likely to spot it twice. And the lion contributed a Christian man. And the lion with the Christian children contributed a child. The lion with the four Christian ladies, once more, they only see the queen of clubs while it's in motion, contributed a Christian lady. The trick's over from your point of view now. So you tell the story about the conversation between the, lion, the Christians and the lion and the lion makes his magic pass. And here, it's over, all together, the Christian men, the Christian children, safe and sound, the Christian ladies. And here, of course, were the four lions. <laughs> this is another story, and in this story, the jacks represent four boys. They were country boys, but they were nearly grown up, fine lads. The kings were four men, and these men were the fathers of the boys, and one holiday they took the boys to the big city to see the sights. The queens, of course, are four ladies, but these ladies weren't the wives of the men, and these ladies weren't the mothers of the boys. These were four wicked ladies, sitting in a cafe in the big city, watching the passers-by. Now, the men were worried about the safety of their boys, so they decided that they would walk together, arm in arm, linked into a chain. That way they thought that the boys would be safe. But though the men could keep the boys safe, who was going to keep the men safe? The ladies came out of the cafe and they walked up the street and they passed the party from the country and they walked down the street and they passed the country party again. And perhaps they caught each other's eyes, I don't know. But shortly after, there were the four men, arm in arm, with the four ladies. And there in the cafe were the four boys, wondering what had happened. But you and I know what had happened, because that's what separates the men from the boys. <laughs> So, the setup to begin with, four jacks, four kings, four queens, the order among them doesn't matter. So you tell your story, you take out the four jacks and you show them, put them back and then count them off once more, one at a time. This is simply to establish the take-off, return and then count action. And these represent the four boys, you turn them over and put them underneath. <laughs> 